Hi, my name is Derek Dieter and I am from SQL Server Planet and today we're going to be talking about the SQL Nexus tool and using it in conjunction with the SQL Diag tool. Uh, basically, uh, these tools are tools that are internal to Microsoft uh, for the most part. Um, they're not heavily supported. Um, they're contained on uh, uh, CodePlex, which is Microsoft's um, open source community, uh, which where they um, uh, keep a lot of software that they don't officially support and um, basically there's a discussion areas and news groups so anyway um, we're lucky to have these tools because they're both very invaluable in helping to determine SQL Server slowdowns and uh, trying to fix whatever SQL Server issues that it is that you may have in regards to optimization so let's go ahead and get started um, what we want to do is first you want to go to sqlnexus.codeplex.com uh, this site contains the download file that you need to install the SQL Nexus tool it also goes through and highlights all the um, common tasks or the uh, install notes that you have to do be real careful with this because uh, you need to follow them specifically this installation is not super easy you do want to make sure to follow it step by step don't miss anything there are a couple of gotchas I'll tell you about what those are uh, the first gotcha that I ran into is that the um, SQL RML tools are not installed uh, by default so here you have the RML utility which is the um, contains the read trace executable which is actually what reads the trace file uh, from the uh, SQL Diag dump and then drops it into a database. Uh, this is uh, uh, supported differently uh, outside of the SQL Nexus tool. This is actually another Microsoft tool. Um, the other place where you can get caught up in is, is downloading this. It's a SQL Perstat script. What this does is actually it starts the SQL Diag session that grabs the trace once it grabs the trace then it outputs it into a directory you can do this on your own uh, because SQL Diag actually comes with SQL 2005 and 2008 by default so there's no need to download or install SQL Diag these SQL perfstat scripts are actually uh, commandlets CMD files which will uh, launch and open up a command prompt so let's get started I'm not going to go through the entire installation. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to post those. I can uh, try to help answer those. What we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a SQL Diag trace. So let's go and let's open up uh, the perfstat scripts. When you download the perfstats, uh, they will be contained in a zip file. So you're going to have to un unzip the file and there is no install you're just going to see it in a directory like this uh, you're not going to probably have this SQL Diag output folder this is only created after you actually run the stats so we'll go through and there's actually three files that we care about here start SQL Diag detail trace start SQL Diag for replay and start SQL Diag trace 2008 so I couldn't get the detailed one to run um, I don't really need to replay the thing and I all we need here is this SQL Diag trace. So let's go ahead and just double click this guy and let's run it. Uh, right now it's asking me if I want to overwrite the files that are already contained in the SQL Diag output folder and yes I do. I have run this before that's why I'm getting that message and we click OK. So we're presented with a screen and what's actually doing is initializing and it's starting the performance monitors, it's starting the blocking trace, blocking script trace, it's starting the um, profile trace and it's gathering the system information, the hardware specifications and now we see that we actually have the stage trace started. So we see the second little green um, line here that says SQL Diag collection is started. Press control C to stop. So right now it is actually collecting all the data um, if we get go ahead and go to the SQL Diag output folder we'll see that some of this data is collected already uh, it didn't necessarily need to um, it, it could it got it immediately right when we started the trace other things like this uh, SP trace BLK and this SP trace are being gathered currently 
and they will actually be dumped when we stop the trace. So we're not going to keep we're not going to take too much of a snapshot here. So we'll go back and let's go ahead and stop this trace. And if we see here, it says um, press Control C to stop. So let's make sure this window has focus. Let's hit Control C. And now it says shutting down the collector. So now we're starting to shut down the collection of these trace, this trace. And it is uh, getting SQL config reports. Um, it's dumping the BLG files, which is the um, Perfmon statistics. It's dumping the trace files, and it's dumping all the information that we need in order to correctly analyze this uh, slowdown and try to figure out why our SQL server is slow. So once we gather all this information, uh, the point is is that we're going to go to the SQL Nexus tool and using the SQL Nexus tool we will correlate all this information together and figure out what is actually causing this slowdown. So it's taken a little while to actually dump these reports. Um, sometimes it just uh, it just does take a little bit and let's just wait a while let's go in here it looks like some things are being written oh we have oh look it's actually overriding the old files that we have and we see now that the trace file is uh, 32 megabytes let's go back here uh, that's a little premature let's go back here and let's find uh, we want to close this SQL Nexus and it looks like the trace is done. I can't find the window anymore, so it must have closed itself. So we're all done. Uh, now what we want to do is slice and dice this data. And so let's go and let's open up the SQL Nexus program. Now SQL Nexus is a lot like this uh, perfsat script, and it doesn't have an official install. It comes in a zip file. So you're going to unzip it and you're going to see a folder that looks a lot like this, which is just can be overwhelming. You don't know what to go, what to open, uh, what to change. Don't have to change anything. We only need to open one file. It is the sqlnexus.exe and we're going to have to run this as an administrator. So let's go ahead and right click on sqlnexus.exe, run as administrator, and there we have it. Okay, it's prompting us to connect to a server. This server is a SQL Server database server. One thing to note here, we just ran our SQL Diag, we got our dump, our trace dump, and we're going to interpret this data. This interpretation should actually be on a non-production system, and I'll tell you why, because when you go and connect to this server and then you import the trace file, what's going to happen is it's going to create a new database on the server that you're connecting to here. We don't want to create we don't want to create that database on a production system. Uh, at least I don't. Um, I'm sure everybody concurs, but you want the production system of course to be a controlled environment. So we're going to run this actually on a development system. So let's imagine we just jumped over to a development system. Here we go. Let's connect to uh, Derek PC. This happens to be my local SQL Server computer and we connect and we're prompted with an interface that looks a lot like a CHM and it kind of acts like a CHM so we have a what is obviously an HTML interface here and we have some reports on the left hand side we have some other options some tasks options and some import options what we want to do I haven't actually used any of this in here running reports create new reports or adding new reports and emailing um, maybe useful features but for what we want we just want to get down to the nitty gritty so let's do that go over on the left hand side and um, under data we want to click on import let's click import and what we're prompted is the source path for the uh, SQL Diag output which uh, when we go back to the folder that we were at we see that this was that same folder that's under the perfstat script 2008 that's the one that I had downloaded because I have SQL 2008 and it's under SQL Diag Output. So we do want to copy this path here and we want to paste it in here. So there we go. Now one thing to note, this is the second time that I've run this so I have to do something special. I actually have to delete the old database that was generated from the previous SQL Diag Output. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Options here and click on Drop Current DB Before Importing there so now it's gonna actually do that once I click on import so let's go ahead and click on import uh, do I are you sure that you want to drop the database yes I am 
Okay, now the fun begins. We are uh, now SQL Nexus, what's happened in the background, SQL Nexus actually launched the read trace executable, which is part of the Microsoft RML tools. And this is actually reading the log file. And it's reading the log file and it's actually creating the database and in the back end and it's parsing everything and making a lot of sense out of stuff that just would not make a lot of sense unless we had um, proper correlations. So uh, a lot of crunching is going on here and uh, we're going to wait for that. Let's see, it gives us a little um, window in the back of how many lines have been processed, how many rows have been inserted, and it's interfacing with that executable that's running. Um, you see that after that, okay, it looks like this is done. Now it's uh, processing some of the other trace files uh, regarding the perf performance statistics. Um, also the fiber channel info, I believe that's just the, uh, what is it, the hardware statistics. So we're almost done here. Almost done. And we're done. Okay. It looks like it's still processing a little bit. Okay, complete. So let's close this. We're ready to go. Being ready to go, let's look over here on reports. Now I'll give you a little bit quick run through. Not all this stuff works because not all this stuff is supported. So we do want to look at what is supported. The only thing that, that I really care about on this, honestly, is the SQL 2005 perf stats and the retrace main, actually the bottleneck analysis also. So let's click on that. We see the bottleneck analysis. So it shows us the system CPU utilization uh, that C SQL Server is utilizing as compared to the system. And then we see some more wait times here. This is all going off the entire wait times. So we have an other wait time. We can actually drill down. There's no drill down available for this specific thing. Uh, we want to go back. So this little button up here will take you back. If you don't click on that, you're going to be spinning around for a long time trying to click on these things. And it's not going to work. It's just going to take you back to the this same screen here. So. Uh, click on this back button and you see here here are the weight stats so now we want to go to let's skip this let's go to the perf stats and we see some additional categories here blocking weight statistics bottleneck analysis and spin lock stats let's just quickly jump to the bottleneck analysis and look and see what we have here and we see a little bit more of the same and we, we do see a little bit of a breakdown on the uh, more weight statistics and we see the wait time, the specific wait time for each of the categories. Uh, we see the CPU, network I.O., and some other um, not so intuitive weights that I'm sure we could look up on MSDN. And let's go to retrace main. This is actually my favorite category to go into. And retrace main, we actually see more of a breakdown and more of a correlation of the perfmon stats and how they relate to the SQL Server queries. So. What we see here is, uh, let's see, it says cumulative resource usage. It shows our batches. Um, it shows uh, CPU reads and writes. So these are all correlated in a timeline. And so we can see what happened at what time. We can come down here further, break it down to a little bit more detail, and come down and actually see what happened during these periods of time. Okay, let's go back to let's go to the next thing let's check out the unique batches this is actually kind of neat we're not going to go completely in depth in this uh, episode but we're, we'll just touch on some of this stuff here this chart actually shows a breakdown of CPU duration writes and reads so this top top left hand corner actually so shows our duration and we see that it actually shows a query number associated with the CPU so here we see to the left we see one so this is query number one took 35% of the CPU during this our trace run. Let's scroll down here. We see query one, and we actually see the query right here. It shows us the query. So it, the guesswork is taken out, and we actually see the query. This is completely beneficial, and this is where you're gonna actually start. So good luck on this. Please uh, write if you have any questions or if you have any issues, and thank you for listening to me. This, again, this is Derek Dieter at SQL Server Planet. Thanks, bye.